Hello there and welcome to the Bed of Peacock, it's my channel where we talk all things Leeds United and George of course, welcome along to the channel as you are watching the video, remember if you like what I'm saying to subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up on the video uh, and yeah let's get straight into it, Leeds United got a 1-1 draw, massive result for Leeds, big goal from Big Pascal at the back stick at Ellen Road in stoppage time, rescues a point for Leeds, brings us out of the relegation zone with the last game to play on Sunday. Of course, our rivals in relegation, Burnley and Everton, both lost. So we picked up ground, we come out of the relegation zone, like I said. They play midweek, they do have games in hand on us, well, a game in hand. So we'll be watching all keenly on Thursday evening, very keenly indeed on those scores coming in. But we're here to talk about this game. And ultimately it yielded uh, an important point for Leeds. Now coming into the game we were obviously off the back of three straight defeats. No win in four uh, games. And there was three changes to the starting lineup. We reverted, Jesse reverted back to a, a back four. Junior Furpo came in at left back. Robin Cock played right back. Matthias Klipp came back in to partner Calvin Phillips in a 4-2-3-1 formation. Rafina Harrison, Rodrigo and Joffy Joe Gelhart for his, you know, another start for, J, uh, for, for Joffy. And the first 90 minutes of his Leeds United career, he got in this one as well. He, he came close to that in November at Spurs but only played 87 minutes of that one as he made way for Stuart McKinstry to make his debut on that evening but yeah that's the starting lineup we you know few changes Jesse Marsh saw fit to go back to a back four and it worked it worked better you know uh, Cocker thought did well at right back excuse me at right back the only weak uh, link in that defence um, was you know, a little bit was Llorente for me. I thought third poet came into the game and started, particularly in the second half, to, to build the attacks, which we, we thought we were going to get when we signed him. Hasn't really gone to plan this season for Firpo. Hopefully next time we'll see him in a better, um, you know, in a better way and performing better, really. Stop start with injury, but yeah, he, he he's not been a standout performer this season. That's none of them have, really. But yeah, um, it was first 10 minutes, we started well, I felt, and then we dropped off. You know, we let we allowed Brighton the time they liked to, to have the ball and pick out the passers and everything like that. They've got players that can hurt as we know it. And they were doing, you know, and they should have been up, up a goal or two before they actually did. Um, the, the, there's a few chances by Solly Marsh that, Marsh that I think he probably should have scored. Particularly one where he just leads United, just leave him open. Somehow, I think he felt he was offside, so he just casually puts it wide. You know, play to the whistle. That's a, a real example of that. Puts it wide. It's a golden opportunity, um, and and it goes begging. But not long after that, you know, Brighton um, get their goal, and it's that man, Danny Welbeck. Danny Welbeck seems to always score against Leeds. I don't know if he does. But he just always seems to score. I know he got one last season against us, but I think that I don't know whether that was his only one. He just always seems to get one. But like I said, I don't know whether he he, he generally does. Obviously, it's just me thinking that he does. But he, you know, he he takes it nicely. But it's criminal to give this goal away. And it's Diego Llorente who's at fault here. The ball gets played into the penalty area um, to Welbeck, who, who just shrugs him off far too easily. He gets pushed off the ball, Llorente. Uh, off balance and 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 well, that takes a couple of touches, dinks it over Melier into the bottom corner, and suddenly we're one 0 down. And you're thinking, here we go again, Leeds. You know the, it's the same again. You're thinking we're relegated, maybe we, we, that's it. It's done. It's finished. You know, hello to the championship and, and everything like that. Because at that point, Leeds United look like they're sinking, and and the team don't look like the really in rhythm with each other. There's so many uh, misplaced passes going. There's no intensity on the ball when Brighton have it. And the, 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 the enormous 
nature of this game seemed to not be transmitting to the field. Um, you know, the crowd were brilliant, getting them up, but they just weren't responding, Leeds United. Heads on the floor, really. But it all could have been different. You know, we had that chance in the, in the first few minutes. Um, if that goes in, it's a different game. Gellhart, and it's unlucky, it's, it's Captain Cooper, it hits him in the face. If it doesn't hit him, it's 1-0. You know, in the third minute, and or something like that, and we we, you know, we're motoring then, and the crowd get up, and the players have belief, but you know, it just it didn't look like that when we went one 0 down. But towards the latter stages of the second half, we actually strung together a little bit of pressure, um, a lot of string of corners. Rafina's corner kicks were awful in this game, actually, but. We strung, you know, getting up the field, getting pressure on Brighton, and we started to do that um, a little bit, edge ourselves into the into their half of the pitch, and actually try and make a game of it. Mateus Click came close. It was a great save by Sanchez, wasn't it? Um, you know, and you're thinking, crikey, it's going to be another game without a goal against Brighton, another defeat. Um, uh, we don't do well against Brighton, but we, you know, we finally ended up getting something in the in the injury time, so yeah, look, we went 1-0 down, we're going 1-0 down in, 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 in half time, and you know, Jesse himself, I think, came out after the game and said, the players didn't believe that we could get something out of this match, and yeah, look, we've, we've, we've gone 1-0 down so many times, um, you know, this season and recently, you know, where you just kind of think, ah, we're not going to get back into it. He said that. He said the players didn't believe that. But, you know, they didn't play like that because they believed they, sh they played like they believed they could get back into this game. Came out all guns blazing in the second half. More intensity, more attacking pressure and prowess. And we almost got in a few times. We were creating chances. I think 19 shots we had yesterday, which is probably a, a lot more than we've had in most games this season. You know, we, we were creating clear-cut chances. You know, Click had a chance, didn't he, with Sanchez? You know, saves. Rafina, if he gets on the end of that one, perhaps puts it in. It was a lovely ball from Rodrigo, but... Yeah, the, the pressure was just going, and we were doing better. Brighton, on the opposite end of it, I thought were very, very passive in this match, and obviously sprinkled bits of quality here and there, and could hurt us on the counter-attack, and... They probably maybe should have had one or two more as well themselves, but the quality wasn't there in the final third. And Melier was not really troubled. I thought defensively, fair play to them. I know I've said about Urente, but other than that, you know, other than the goal, really, I think he, they all played okay. You know, Cot looked decent at right back. Maybe that's a, an option for, for, for next season that they might look at, at doing, regardless of what division we're in, to be honest. Um, and yeah, we, we kept pushing, you know, I know that there was uh, rousing calls of Marcelo Bielsa at one stage in the second half, which I don't agree with, I think it's only, you, you know, it's, it's only can do harm, that sort of thing, when the players are low on confidence, the manager is doing his best, the current manager is doing his best, and, and, and the fans can only sing about a former manager, for me, it's reductive, I get the pull, obviously, and uh, anything of, ba of Bielsa, of course I do, but he's not here anymore, and we are now in a, in a relegation fight, obviously, to save ourselves. I don't know if singing his name is really the right choice to do, but it was very audible, um, you know, in the second half. I think it was when Furpo came off, he put, he put Strauch on. <laughs> a lot of people thinking, Craig, it's a defender for a defender. What are you doing? <laughs> well... What was he doing? He was securing as a point, a, 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 a vital point, as Strauch obviously went on to get the equaliser. Uh, and let's talk about that, you know, because uh, obviously we're rolling towards the end of the game. There's not much, um, you know, going for leads. Six minutes go up and you're thinking, here we go, it's another defeat. What now is it? Relegation almost really confirmed and it's out of our hands. But who should pop up? You know, really lovely bit of skill by Gelhart to get work the bit of space. Then he pings it across to 
to Pascal who puts his head on it straight in the goal all over the line I think it was Webster obviously got to it too late put it out but it was a clear goal way over the line easy stuff as you like and you know well I say easy it was quite a stressful watch wasn't it really but you know the goal itself was made to look easy by that lovely bit of skill from Joffy wasn't it and um, you know Pascal goes off celebrates with the fans everybody goes across to to him we've had many late goals this season um, and it's you know it's another one and it's probably the most important one you could have obviously Pascal Strout has been was been speaking after spoke after it sorry um, and this is what he said he said it's the most important of his career so far um, he spoke about Joffe and how Joffe you know he's really good he said he's Joffe and it was great bit of you know bit of play he said he didn't he hadn't seen it back at that at that moment but I'm sure he has now <laughs> I'm sure he has now and um, yeah great great for Pascal that and, um, and, the, and the lads and it's what we deserved we deserved at least a point um, I felt um, in this one and we probably, I think, I agree with Jesse, whose comments will be on the screen now there. He said, you know, on another day, second half, we were pushing and we maybe could have got more. Um, he was happy with it. Um, he wasn't happy with the first half, though, he said. Um, and he said Brighton, you know, put us under pressure in moments with the ball. He's, he wasn't happy with how we were off the ball. And, it, you know, I wasn't either. I felt we gave Brighton in the first half far too much of the ball and just stood off them a bit and I don't think that's what you need to do when you're playing a team like Brighton who have the technical ability to to hurt us and like I said I think they were quite passive in this game but it's they've been their best season I think in the Premier League points wise um, so you know they've got nothing to play for I know they want to get as high as they can but really they've got not much to play for and you know it's been all round a very good season for them but you know I thought the day belonged really to Leeds and more you know obviously the result uh, needed for Leeds just to edge themselves above Burnley in, into 17th place and that well at the end of the season if that finishes like that um, if we're like that this time next week then happy days and and we survive another for another season in the Premier League let's wait and see what happens but it was an enormous effort from the lads out to dig in and get a point there. Um, incidentally, uh, this is what uh, Graham Potter had to say about the result. Uh, obviously, like I said, um, neither here nor there really for Brighton. It doesn't really mean much. Um, he said he was quite satisfied and proud of the performance. He acknowledged the the intense atmosphere that Leeds United fans create at Ellen Road and make it difficult for the opposition. Um, so I think generally he was probably quite happy with a with a point like I said no real consequence to Brighton's season either way um, but a massive one to ours and a brilliant uh, point overall let me know your comments we are edging towards the end of the season for me can't come quick enough to be honest with you uh, been a it seems to have gone on for ages and you know will we survive won't we survive it'll be finally you know good to put the the you know the nail in it, you know, next se you know next week, and just say, yeah, we survived. Or no, we didn't. This is what we've got to do now. Um, but we're still alive, Leeds fans. We're still alive, and you know, it's it is what it is. Um, we've just got to wait nervously and look at Burnley and Everton's results on Thursday, and then it comes a big one on Sunday against Brentford. I will be previewing that later on in the week, um, and let me know, of course. Uh, your thoughts were you there on Sunday at Ellen Road how mental did you go when you were watching it whenever you were watching it when Pascal put that one in um, you know let me know and do you think now that we can stay up we've given ourselves a massive lifeline um, with that result let me know what your thoughts are thanks as always for watching leave your comments below um, and uh, marching on together I'll see you on the next one